For this video, I'm going to demonstrate the peripheral arterial disease exam. Uh, so to start off, I'll just introduce myself. Hi, my name is Evan Graham. Uh, I'm with Internal Medicine. I'm just going to examine for peripheral arterial disease on you if that's all right. Mm -hmm. So I start off by washing my hands, uh, and then I want to always make sure that the patient's stable uh, and that their vitals are all uh, well and everything, uh, assuming that this is in an office. And if they weren't, then I would do something uh, to address that. Um, Moving on from there, uh, in terms of vital signs, I wouldn't really expect any um, abnormalities with uh, peripheral arterial disease. Um, so I'll go straight on to inspection. Uh, if you could just lie down for me, it would make it a little bit easier. So I'll start off by inspecting uh, the foot. Uh, and when you're actually looking at the foot, things that you'll note uh, is just the color. Uh, so you can note any kind of pallor from malperfusion. Uh, you can look for other kind of color changes, uh, such as like erythema, um, they, they can be blue, uh, and they can be purple as well. Uh, along with that, you can look for actually uh, muscle wastage. You can look for dry and kind of cracked skin. You can look for loss of hair, lo or loss of hair which is uh, most prominent normally on the tips of the toes that you look for. And then you can look for signs of arterial ulcerations. Um, and so arterial ulcers are most commonly found um, on the lateral malleolus. Uh, on the tips of the toes, uh, the metatarsal areas, and then also underneath on the uh, bunion regions as well. Um, to differentiate arterial ulcers from venous ulcers, um, arterial ulcers are more deep, um, punched out, uh, that's the way they describe them, so they're very crisp, kind of defined borders on them, and they're very painful as well, as people describe. Uh, whereas venous ulcers are more commonly located actually on the, the medial malleolus. Uh, they have a more flat, kind of diffuse kind of area. Uh, they're painless, and then they can also look, uh, they can have a wet kind of appearance to them as well. So that would be how you differentiate the two. Um, so that's inspection. Moving on from there, I would go on uh, to palpate the pulses. You can bring your legs down. Uh, to start off, you'd want to palpate the femoral pulse, uh, which is between uh, the anterior uh, iliac, superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis, halfway between there and uh, about one centimeter below uh, the inguinal ligament. Um, so you'd palpate there. You'd palpate at the, the popliteal pulse as well. Um, so this, you want the legs, the knees slightly bent, uh, and you go posteriorly with both your hands, and you want to actually entrap the popliteal pulse right here at the artery there, and feeling for the pulse. Um, we have the dorsalis um, posterior tibial, uh, which is just posterior and, uh, and inferior uh, to the lateral uh, malleolus. And then last is the dorsalis pedis, um, and so the way to really find this is you get the person who's slightly flexed, and you want to go lateral uh, to the first uh, extensor tendon, uh, the first toe. Um, where these actually join up here, and you feel. And so I feel the pulse there as well. Just note, um, all of these uh, very, you should have a pulse in every single region, except the dorsalis pedis and some individuals do not have a pulse. So if you don't have a pulse there, um, that's not necessarily a positive finding. If you're unable to get a pulse in any of these regions, uh, then you'd move on to Doppler. Uh, and so with Doppler, you'd go in the same regions, uh, for a Doppler pulse, uh, and it should be triphasic. Uh, commonly, as people get older, you can get a biphasic uh, sound as well, which is still normal. Um, it'd be abnormal if you only have a monophasic or no pulse at all. From there, uh, we'll go on uh, to special tests. Um, so first special test that I'll do um, is the cap refill. Um, this is not that specific of a finding for peripheral arterial disease, but um, what you do is you press down and you look for the time of refilling, how long it takes before it becomes erythematous. So again, uh, a normal finding should be less than five seconds. Uh, after that, you can go on to the venous uh, fill time. And so you'll look on the legs. In the younger individuals, it's harder to find a good vein to look at. Older individuals usually have more prominent veins. Um, but here's a vein right here. And what you do is you, you raise it up about 45 degrees, and you hold it up here for a minute, and you let the vein uh, completely collapse. And then after that, you lower it back down to level, and you look for the time that it takes to refill. And the time to refill should be less than 20 seconds. 
After that, uh, there's the burger test. So the burger's test, the way that one works is this one you actually raise the, the leg up 90 degrees and you wait until the leg uh, develops pallor. In a normal individual, they actually shouldn't develop any pallor. Um, but you wait to see if there's any pallor and then after there's pallor, you slowly lower it back down and what you're looking is the return of erythema. And so if it doesn't return until your leg's actually below the level of the bed, then that's a positive finding where it becomes erythematous. Last thing that you want to test for is uh, the uh, ankle brachial uh, index. Um, so you take both a brachial pulse and uh, a pulse from the ankle. Um, so uh, just to describe it, so you put the cup on, uh, just like if you were to take a blood pressure, you inflate the cup um, above the level of the systolic blood pressure, about 20, 20 above. And then after that, you slowly lower it and you'll be actually measuring it with a Doppler pulse over the artery. And so you'd lower it down, lower it down um, until you can hear the first uh, systolic pulse. So that's a systolic pulse there. That's really all we need to measure for the ankle brachial index. You would also do this on the ankle as well. You put the cuff here, and you do it from the uh, posterior tibial region. Um, again, inflating it, and then slowly until you get a pulse there. And so in a, um, a normal individual would have an ankle brachial index greater than 0.9. If you have between 0.7 and 0.9, that's mild disease. 0.4 and 0.7 is moderate, and then less than 0.4 is severe disease. If you have less than 0.5, that's when you're gonna have the resting uh, ischemic pain. And then less than 0.2 is normally when you develop a gangrenous um, or limb-threatening disease. Occasionally, you can get uh, a falsely elevated um, ankle brachial index. So if the index is greater than 1.3, that's an indication that you actually have calcification of the arteries. And so uh, with that, the arteries are very stiff. And so even though you're pumping it up, you get a falsely elevated systolic pulse on there. If that's to happen, you have to go more um, uh, distally um, from, and maybe take the pulse from like a, a toe to try to get it that way. Or you can use like a, a duplex ultrasound to also uh, examine it. Uh, so that's the end of the peripheral